I'm Shane Stevenson, curator and director of museum collections here at the Buffalo Naval Park. And today we're standing in the control room of USS Croker. Originally constructed as SS-246, she was a Gato-class submarine, one of 77 constructed for World War II. All right, she was commissioned in 1944 and was crossing the Panama Canal into the Pacific on June 6, 1944, otherwise known as D-Day. She was home ported first in Pearl Harbor and from there conducted six war patrols, sinking 11 Japanese vessels for about 49,000 tons worth of material. One of those 11 vessels was the Japanese light cruiser, the Nagara, which was first in her class. So there was a Nagara class uh, cruiser. And that had, the Nagara had participated in uh, many battles, especially in Gua around Guadalcanal, the uh, night battles uh, in 1942. If you think of the control room of a submarine, and you compare it to, say, a human body, it is the brain and the spinal column, so the thinking center and the nerve center of a submarine. We do have uh, the night lights on. I'd love to do the whole video in night lights, but I don't think we will. Uh, so I'll turn the regular lights on. Now, why were these lights used? All right, this was to help the crew and the officers who were outside on the deck in the blazing sunlight uh, helps their eyes adjust quicker uh, when they come into this red light here. And conversely, if they were down below uh, or on a patrol for a long time and they were going out into the blazing sun, uh, these lights would be turned on and it would help their eyes adjust when they actually hit the sunlight. All right, well, that's a little bit better. So we're going to be I'm going to be walking around and talking a little bit about uh, some of the components of uh, the control room. First, we got to start with the hull opening indicator, or what's known as the Christmas tree. All right, so all of these represented a valve or a hatch uh, that could potentially be open and bring water on board. So before a ship, uh, before a sub submerged, all right, they had to make sure that this went for all the, all these hatches and valves went from open to closed. All right, it's also known as the Christmas tree because uh, the lights were red and green depending on open or shut. All right, so you obviously had to make sure that all of these hatches uh, and valves were closed before submerging. In case of an emergency, they could do them manually by these three knobs here. All right, and each of the knobs has a different handle, so even if it was uh, full dark, they would be able to tell which handle they were grabbing and what that respective valve uh, did, or what that respective handle did. A little farther down here, uh, aft, is uh, the steering plane station. All right, so we have the forward steering uh, wheel, and we have the aft steering wheel. There's various gauges here that the crewmen would have to read. Uh, the plane angle indicators, uh, the deep depth gauge, and a shallow depth gauge. So there are a few ways that you can control uh, a submarine underwater. One was the really loud way of doing it, where they would just be able to transfer water from one ballast uh, tank to the other or any of the other auxiliary ballast tanks. All right, so that was needed uh, in a moment's notice if you had to make a sharp turn or you needed to uh, surface real quickly or submerge real quickly. Uh, the more gentle and more quiet way, which is the most important thing for a submarine, was using these two uh, steering wheels. So the forward, uh, Controlling the bow planes would be for movement up and down through the water. And the stern plane always controlled the level of the boat. 
So if you're sinking, you want to be level. If you're rising, you want to be level. All right, and then that would be controlled to make sure that you were at, uh, say, a zero angle. All right, when you are submerging uh, or rising or surfacing. All right, above us here is the conning tower. Maybe you can see we have a periscope. All right, so that is where the captain would be and other officers for uh, guidance and uh, torpedo. So it had the two uh, periscopes up there, a passive periscope uh, when they weren't in uh, battle ready condition and an attack periscope when they were in hostile waters ready to take aim at a vessel or two. Uh, the steering wheel was also up there, which controlled the rudder. So you have up and down and keeping level here in this compartment and the rudder uh, wheel was up in the conning tower. If something happened to the conning tower, you could use this emergency or auxiliary steering wheel, right? And that also controlled the rudder. Okay, talking about the three, di the three alarms now. We have a collision alarm, we have the general quarter alarm, and we have the dive alarm. All right, so the general quarters alarm, when that sounded, you had to get to your battle station. All right, so it's just like being, we are saying we're at the ready and ready to uh, carry on with our duties. Uh, the diving alarm, that was in an emergency if there was an enemy coming or a plane coming, uh, a Japanese plane. And what that would do is it would give you 10 seconds to close all of the hatches and all of the openings and begin diving. All right, that's why uh, sailors had to be qualified on a submarine because you had to be able to do that within 10 seconds and the goal was within 35 seconds to be at 65 feet depth. And at 65 feet, the top of the periscope was just below the waterline and so therefore you had zero profile uh, on the surface of the water. So the, the goal was to reach 65 feet uh, depth within 35 seconds. The collision alarm was for just that. There is imminent danger aboard or there is imminent danger and everything needed to be shut immediately. It didn't have the 10 second leeway like you would with the dive alarm. So no matter where anyone was on the boat, Everything had to be shut immediately uh, to protect from catastrophic water, uh, water coming on board. And all of these valves here you see here, right. and moving aft, were the manifolds to control uh, the flow of gases and fluid aboard uh, USS Croker. So you had some for the ballast tanks, you had some for the auxiliary tanks, uh, and you had some for the main ballast tanks, right, and also the torpedo tubes. So you needed that 3,000 pounds of air pressure to propel a torpedo tube out into the water and to have her run straight and true. All of these were controlled, all of the gases and uh, liquids were controlled by the manifolds here, here, and aft there. All right, we have the gyro compass uh, control panel. All right, so this controlled the gyro compass, which is here in the middle of the uh, here in the middle of the uh, control room. This is the main compass used. Uh, there was a compass in the uh, conning tower, but that was a verification compass. So this compass was able to take a relative bearing, where you are relative to true bearing. All right, so true bearing was really where you were on the planet at the time. All right, north was true north. But then there's also relative bearing, which is the direction you're going and the degree at which you're going, whether it's 260, 180. So you had relative bearing and true bearing being able to be taken from this compass here. And of course there were charts everywhere, so we have a little representation there. Uh, here's the internal uh, communications board. All right, so this 
managed all of the electrical power that would go to a various compartment uh, so they would be able to speak to other compartments, uh, the bridge, the conning tower. So this controlled how much electrical juice that each of the compartments received. Just forward of that is the forward auxiliary switchboard. All right, there was an aft auxiliary switchboard as well, and this controlled power to the control room forward for the control room, for the officer's quarters and officer's country, and then into the forward torpedo tube. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tour of the control room. We do have a 360 uh, virtual tour that we will be releasing uh, sometime later this year in the next month or so. All right, and that will also be embedded with some audio, so you can listen to the audio when you watch the virtual tour, and that will cover all of USS Croker SSK246. All right, make sure you uh, like this video and please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and please be on the lookout for more videos. Thank you very much.